This is Unrivaled, the Penn State football story presented by Pepsi. What's up, what's up, what's up? What? Get ready to hit the shot town. Young Cohen. I don't even know what they Boy, got a man bun. What's up, what's up? Cohen don't talk to the camera ever. Nah, I don't really talk to the camera. Cohen talk to everybody else, but he don't want to show his two person Shut up, man. You gotta get it. How you, right, you gotta right, try. Right. You gotta try your hardest at all times. Well, hey man, just because the camera ain't on you, let me get my five man. minutes. Right? Hey Ham, no, the new Trippy Red right? mixtape though. Wow, wow, I heard it. Hey man, Marcus, you right? It's Marcus, man. Presidential out here, man. Need that. All this leg room right here is vital for me, man. I need that. Need that. <laughs> Living oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. You gotta put it on. You gotta pick it up and eat it. Oh! I was not called for. that makes yeah. a difference. Whatever impact yeah. you're making, special teams, yeah. offense, blocking, yeah. whatever it is, you dominate today, okay? Every opportunity yeah. you get to make a play, you make. Yeah. You know who you represent. You know who you represent. Who oh, starts to finish? Hey, it's us all day. Don't let anyone take what we've been building. Right here. Uh, show of hands. How many of you guys played Northwestern before? How many of you guys beat Northwestern before? We've got a problem with that, Phil. And that's exactly why we're here. We got a lot of upperclassmen here. Yes, sir. Who out of the past three years, we lost to these guys twice, and we have not checked that box in the win column. No. Nope. That's precisely why we're here today. That's TV right. game, right. statement game. Make sure you guys make a statement. The Penn State runs the Big Ten. We got an opportunity right now. Don't take what we have for granted. Play like a team that understands and realizes the opportunity we have. This is Unrivaled, the Penn State football story presented by Pepsi. They deferred. Penn State will receive. Nick Sorley looking left and throwing that way to Juwan Johnson. Out of the 41. Sorley to his left. Little shovel pass to Barkley. And he is at the logo right in midfield. Fourth down and eight. Here's McSorley under pressure. He'll run for it, and they'll turn it over on downs. That's how Northwestern will get the football for the first time. Third down and eight. Pressure coming. And it's batted away at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Gibbons. It's a nice job by Gibbons, and a little cross dog up front by Cabinda. First and goal, and out at the 20-yard line after the penalty yard. Pressure up the middle. Thorson feels it all the way. The 
sack from Curtis Cawthorn. You got that on the sneak? Woo! That's a good job, man. That's a good job. Dorson throws a jump ball. The 50-50 ball is won by Penn State. Interception, Amani Oruweria, his third of the season. Blake Gillikin from his four will put it in the air. Excellent defensive play. Hit as he throws. Ball is loose. It does look like a fumble recovered by Penn State. It's the second Northwestern turnover. Shakatoni just rushing off the edge. Hands starting at that left tackle position. That's just textbook. They don't want to get a feather. Good job. Penn State takes over. Excellent field position. It's going to be a 21 yard field goal attempt, and that is good. Pressure on Thorson, he'll roll out of it, and he'll throw it away. First down and 10. McSorley fakes the part, but now he'll throw a man wide open, DeAndre Tompkins. Tommy Stevens now. He is a backup quarterback with McSorley out there, and Barkley, and they're throwing, and they're completing for a touchdown. touchdown. That Stevens out of the backfield. Trace McSorley to his backup quarterback, Tommy Stevens, for the touchdown. Ten nothing at the break. Northwestern will get the ball to start the second half. Let's go, man. Wake up. Let's go. Be out here. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, zero zero. Let's go. Takeaways. Not letting them run the football. Big right there. Win the second half. Win the game. Play together. Play as a team that understands what we got going here. Let's go. Let's go. Leadership of the team. Go win this thing, White. And Tyler Davis approaches, drives it high, end over end. Blitz coming from Cabinda. Rolls near side, delivers, caught, no, nope, dropped, incomplete, fourth down. Christian Campbell with him step to step. Here's McSorley out of the flat to Mike Kosicki. McSorley comes out firing and completing to DeAndre Tompkins for first down yardage. That's 11 in a row now for Trace McSorley. Takes the snap, play action fake, waits. Delivers near side. He's got blacked off 35. Breaks a tackle 30, 20, near side 15. It'll be first and goal for the Nittany Lions. Goes for 38 yards on the plate. Well, they made that look easy. Trace McSorley hits 13 consecutive pass plays. This time it's Barkley over the top for the touchdown. 38th career rushing touchdown for Saquon Barkley. Takes the snap, it's Jackson sweeping near side, strung out by Buck Holt, and there is Haley to finish him off for a wasp back on the 16-yard line with help from James Simmons. Sixth Penn State tackle for loss here today. Throws it downfield, and incomplete the coverage by Amani Oyewarie. That's good coverage down the field. There's no way to throw that ball. Back goes McSorley with time over the middle. He's got Tompkins 35-40, Tompkins 45. Lowers the shoulder over the 45 for a first down. Trace McSorley has been very impressive today. Here's Barkley looking to break one down the sideline. The run we've all been waiting for. Saquon Barkley, touchdown. Touchdown, Penn State, Saquon Barkley. The Nittany Lions open up a 24 to nothing lead. We go to the fourth quarter. Back 
goes Thorson. Pressure, and down he goes. Ryan Buckholz with the initial pressure and cleaned up by Sharif Miller. Good job by Buckholz, who's continuing to elevate his game. Thorson in the end zone. Delivers and knocked away and incomplete by Grant Haley. It's going to be fourth down. Well, he wants to throw. Quick out, caught by Tompkins. Good throw that time by McSorley. Put that ball on the line. McSorley takes it. He'll keep it himself. Follows Barkley. First down. Turns, gives it to Barkley. Barkley, stutter sets. Block from Polk to the 40. Block from McSorley to the 35, to the 30. 12 yards and a first down for Saquon Barkley. Polk ends up giving him almost like a basketball screen on the play. Also McSorley putting his left shoulder down and Barkley is able to get the first down. Takes the snap, straight drop. Delivers for Sanders, caught. Sanders breaks the tackle 30, 25. Delivers. Caught, Blacknall 20, lowers the shoulder to the 19, struggles to the 17 and a first down. That extra effort moves the chains. Pump fakes, McSorley looks, dumps it off to Sanders. Sanders has done a good job of catching the football, running with the football, and also breaking tackles yeah. as well. McSorley running into the end zone, untouched, making it look easy. Wow. It's going to be McSorley following Miles Sanders into the end zone and the Nittany Lions game set and match in Evanston today. All Nittany Lions here this afternoon. The Nittany Lions are 6-0 on the season. They win today 31-7 in part because of a dominant defensive performance. Our defense played lights out. You know, basically played shutout football for four quarters until we got the backups in there. Great team win. We met our objective, which is to be 1 0 each week. We did it. We're now bowl eligible. Yeah. Ice hockey is an international game, and Moscow's Dennis Smirnov has made an immediate impact at Penn State after leading college hockey and freshman scoring last season with 47 points, including 19 goals. The culture we have here is unbelievable, and program itself, just how young it is, and how everyone who comes here wants to develop it and make a history. In Russia, they love the game very early in life, and Dennis was no exception. When I was three years old, Dad's friend asked him to buy something in hockey store. So I went there and uh, people that worked there dressed me in whole hockey gear. And then I didn't want to take it off. So my dad was like, okay, let's buy it. And then uh, and that's why I got a hockey. He came over to the United States when he was 14, thanks to his sister, Yulia, who was playing varsity tennis at Binghamton. Went to Scranton, so which was like 40 minutes away from her. It was a tough decision, but we all made it. And then now I'm here. For head coach Guy Godowski, Smirnoff brings great intangibles to the game. It's how he processes the game and what he's able to do with his hands. I think there's a lot of players that have great hands that don't see what Dennis sees. I think the way he sees the game, the way he slows the game down, is just, it's spectacular. I mean, it's really fun to watch. He's a very different player that way. Smirnoff learned English and about the culture from his sister and host families in Wilkesbury. She like a mom, I call her mom. Uh, throughout the years that we lived together. She took care of me, helped me with everything. Can't thank her enough for the, the way she did and things she gave up for me was means so much to me. 
He then went to Fargo, North Dakota to play in the USHL. It was a fun experience, learned a lot from that, how to um, manage yourself, be more professional. Guy Godowski always had Smirnoff on his radar. He came over from Russia to Pennsylvania to play youth hockey. He was very special automatically. He had a couple other players with him. They were pretty good as well, so it was a fun team to watch. For Smirnoff, a great highlight was the incredible Big Ten championship run at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit last March. We didn't come in first place during that tournament. We came from like four spots, so it was um, more special and plus winning first. Uh, first one in program's history, which is big, too. Smirnoff never forgets his Russian roots, including his favorite saying. My mom and my dad always say, live for a century, learn for a century. Penn State's Dennis Smirnoff bringing an international flair to one of the top programs in college hockey. This is Unrivaled, the Penn State football story presented by Pepsi. All right, here we go. Let's get into these guys. There's some familiarity from last year, obviously. We've got some new guys up front, starting with their offensive line, which we've always had tremendous respect for. The best two players are the guys on the on the right. If that linebacker starts to exchange too quickly, he just slows it and comes out of there, you know, staying square, is able to, to slow that end down and keep that B gap open. One of the factors in this game is going to be how we handle the tempo. If you watch last year's film, there's several snaps where we're not lined up in time. Okay? And we're working in a little bit each day so you're used to it. So we got to just be mindful and work a little bit harder all week at putting ourselves, like we always do, in a situation in practice that's harder than what you get in the game. And that's what we're going to attempt to do. But if you don't pay heed to it, and you don't work like crazy at it, ah, we won't be good enough at it. Any questions? So that's what hunger drills is today. But what we had to give up was getting into our circuits and doing our thing. So great individual on your fundamentals and your techniques because we thought the tempo stuff was more important today that we get going on that. All right? Okay. Unrivaled, the Penn State football story, is brought to you by Pepsi. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get in the game. Pepsi, proud partner of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Also brought to you in part by PSECU. Since 1934, PSECU has given Pennsylvanians financial opportunities to live a better life. At PSECU, we are proud of who we are and committed to who we serve because our Pennsylvania roots run deep. We are banking on a difference. This week on campus in Penn State Athletics, the men's ice hockey team hosts AIC Thursday night at 7 o'clock in Pagula and Friday evening in Pagula at 7 o'clock. The field hockey team on Friday hosts Rutgers at 5 o'clock at the field hockey complex. At Jeffrey Field, the women's soccer team will host Purdue Friday night at 7. And next Wednesday, the 25th, the women's volleyball team will be back in action in Rec Hall to host Wisconsin. That starts at 7 o'clock. That's this week on campus in Penn State Athletics. My name is Brad Keen. I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Marketing. My specific focus is on Penn State football, and that's everything that goes into the event itself in terms of promotion, and experience. Specific to the whiteout, we start talking about that years in advance. Once you've settled on a game, then you start looking at the presentations, the, the different video board elements. You want to keep it as clean as possible because you want the fans to kind of step in and, and take over and carry the energy and excitement. When I look at most games, I look at two things, right? Experience and then there's attendance. The whiteout is all about experience. That's when you get to have some fun and you get to do some things like the fireworks. Fireworks all over the stadium. Coordinating and choreographing fireworks shows is not something I'm an expert at. That's not my job. So I depend on our vendor to kind of come in and help us. You know, we feel like we've got a, a top-notch partner. We'll do anything that anyone asks us to do. If I go to them and I say, hey, look, this is what we want, 
they'll deliver and I know they'll deliver. Now that's the show, right? That's not the different elements of the show. The audio associated with the show, it takes a very special person to, uh, to pull all of that together. And we've got a marketing manager on staff, PJ Mullen, who's able to do that. The video, we work with WPSU on campus, as well as a videographer with football. The vision and the direction, that's a collaborative effort. We all sit down, you know, months in advance, but it's a lot of different people that make it happen. And it's funny because, you know, we, we put all this time, this effort, this energy, months worth of work for 60 seconds worth of glory. But a new twist tonight, fireworks, pyro blowing around. There's something special about playing under the lights, especially for a whiteout. So last year, we went with the 360 degree fireworks and then we synced that up with a, a special whiteout intro video. You also have to kind of keep in mind that there needs to be some balance, right? You can't swing the pendulum too far one way. That there is a sweet spot. And I think last year we hit the sweet spot. And so what you'll see on Saturday is kind of a mixture of what we've been able to accomplish over the last few years. This crowd is electric here at Denver Stadium. The whiteout is special and the tradition is there, but without the Penn State fans, it doesn't happen, it doesn't work. I mean, the Penn State fans are what makes it. It creates a sense of community where you're all in this together and you know you're all you're all kind of pulling the rope in the same direction to impact the game in a positive manner and that's what makes the whiteout so special getting into michigan great school great tradition great history very talented obviously head coach uh, and staff and players and it's going to be a real real challenge for us there's no doubt about it We're excited. It's going to be a great environment. I think people realize the only thing I like more than Christmas is a whiteout football game. My first ever Penn State game was the Ohio State whiteout a few years ago. One of the reasons why I fell in love with this place, the enthusiasm the fans have and how much people just care about football here. If you're a college football fan, you have to experience at least one whiteout in your life. We're excited to just get out there, another opportunity with this team. It's even more exciting being it's the whiteout. You don't really understand unless you can come experience it for yourself. I love standing at that tunnel, feeling the energy and electricity in the stadium. You know, offensively, they're what I would describe as a traditional Big Ten offense where they're going to try to run the ball down your throat and play action pass. So it's going to be a challenge, and I think we all know Coach Harbaugh runs the offense for them. And then defensively, Don's going to overload the box. A lot of guys are going to be on the line of scrimmage in blitz positions and blitz demeanor. The defensive backs are going to be pressed pretty much across the board. They're going to try to take your run game away, and they're going to take all the easy throws away. Our guys are going to have have to create space with the routes and they're gonna have to make contested catches. Tonight we are loading in trucks and we are gonna do something called dumping trucks, which means unloading all the trucks. It's Penn State's iconic location. If you're a Penn State alum, fan, faculty, administrator, you know Old Maine. So come out and see the show. It's exciting to be here. We're all excited to be here. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun and the, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. My message for the team this week is they've earned these things. The rankings, ESPN and College Game Day is coming, the fact that this is a whiteout. But at the end of the day, none of those things matter. It's about our preparation. Probably the most important job of a head coach, in my opinion, is to eliminate distractions. And if not handled right, that's what these can be. So, you know, we're going to stick to our routine and our SOP and kind of go from there. We talk about all the time about this being a game of inches and a game of seconds on the clock and how we fight for every inch on the field. At any point in the game, every inch matters. Every second matters. And you need to take advantage of it. We got our one-on-one -on -one period, which is going to be really, really important. One-on-one -on -one pass protection and trying to get pressure on the quarterback. One-on-ones from a coverage standpoint and routes. I'd say that's one of the bigger challenges in this game 
is our wide receivers and tight ends being able to create separation against their defensive backs. This is who they are. This is what they do. This is the world they live in. And being able to make contested catches as well. That is going to be a huge part of this game. Right, right away, bang, tight, right away. All right, here we go, back up just a step, Dumont. There you go, there you go, here we go. Perfect, good, good rep, both of you guys. Feel good, wide out week, get ready to go to work. Right. Oh. Oh. Finish! Go! Hey, that's a good job. Listen, man. The ticket to, they don't run the ball. But more importantly, by being more physical, playing on their side, and getting downhill on things. Now, if we kind of play, ah, pitter-patter, just, just fit it, ah, then they'll be in it. Play with a temperament like we ain't played with yet. Watch that film. Watch that film. Know these guys, man. Know these guys. I think it's a good start. Like I told him, we're going to put y'all in the roughest spots we can. We want the practices to be harder than the games. Right? So you guys did a good job. All week long, that's going to be very, very important. Hey, Tyler Davis, where you at? That's the way to end practice. Let's get a break on you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.